as we consider for a moment what we want in a good solid network is probably a good solid network. Whether it's wired or wireless, we just want that puppy to work when we're trying to use it. In this video, I'd like to share with you some advancements that have happened in the world of Wi-Fi, including mesh Wi-Fi networks that can help us improve the foundation and the reliability of wireless networks and get rid of a lot of those dead spots. So let's take a look at the big picture. We have some internet connectivity coming in from a service provider, the person providing this internet service. That might be a cable provider with a cable modem, or it could be a telephony company with a DSL device. And either way, from that device, it's gonna come from an ethernet cable to our router. Now, a lot of routers these days have the access point, the wireless piece built in, and the routing function, which is the case with this Airport Extreme, one of my favorite routers. I've had a lot of high-end routers for a small office, home office. And uh, the Airport Extreme is one of my favorites. Apple has discontinued them. Anyway, the connection would come in. It would go into the WAN port on this bad boy, which is right here. And this has some built-in Ethernet ports that could go off to other devices. And this device is acting as an access point, which is a fancy way of saying the device that sends and receives radio frequency. Now, imagine if this device is in the base, not basement, but like the downstairs, it's a two or three story home and it's downstairs in the bottom room where the cable's coming in. Imagine this is a speaker, like an audio speaker and sending signals. If we're really close to it, we can hear it. This thing's our favorite music, it's great. However, the further we get away, the weaker and weaker that signal, that audio signal is gonna be in this example. And also, if we go upstairs, the signal going through the floor and it angles, it just gets beat up and weaker and weaker. They call that attenuation, a weaker and weaker signal. So eventually, if somebody is far enough away, like three stories up in a far room, there may not be enough signal for them to even hear if these are speakers. Well, the same kind of concept works with an access point, a wireless access point sending radio frequency for a Wi-Fi. So the challenge is, how do we get no dead spots? And one option we used to use, and a lot of people still do, was they get some kind of extender or repeater. Now, what this device, this is an Airport Extreme, this is an Airport Express. They're both Apple products, these are great. So we put this one, near where the cable comes in, where the cable modem is. And this one we would put a few rooms further away. And what it would do, it would take the signals and it would repeat them. If you're a network person, sort of like a, a, a dumb hub, back in the days when we used hubs instead of switches. And it would then propagate that signal on and on. The more we have to repeat a signal and the worse that signal is, the worse service we're gonna have. Now, on top of all that, trying to get coverage for our home, on top of all that, it's very likely in most areas we have a lot of other com competition for those same frequencies of signals. We have the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum range of frequencies, and there's also the five gigahertz range of frequencies. And a lot of people, if they live in close proximity to each other, as I do in this unit right here, there's a lot of competition. So between competing for signals with our neighbors and also having walls and floors to go through and repeaters that have weak signals, there's lots of opportunity for dead spots and for loss of internet connectivity when we're using Wi-Fi. So to the rescue, we have this new solution, newer solution called mesh Wi-Fi. Let's take a look at how it works. So when implementing a mesh network, instead of just having one device acting as an access point, we're gonna have a team. And when you see, you see mesh, think of a team of access points, of wireless devices that are sending and receiving signals for the benefit of the people in the house. So our connection from the internet still comes in at the same place right here. And so we can have access point one. So this device, access point one, is the wireless device and it's acting as a router. But in addition, we could put an access point up here on the third floor, we'll call that access point two. And we can put another one here on the second floor, we'll call that access point three. Now what these three devices are doing in the background is they are having a party and they are going to communicate back and forth using radio frequency and be able to send information back and forth very, very quickly. And the term full mesh implies that every device is connected to every other device. So if we have three access points and they're all connected to each other, that's an example of a full mesh. Now the benefit of this is we have users like Bob who's upstairs and he's connecting to the wireless network. Bob is gonna connect to its closest AP, which is AP2. And if Lois is downstairs, she could connect to AP1 or AP3, depending on which is the preferable one signal-wise. And her computer or her mobile device will sort that out with the access point. For this discussion, let's imagine she connects to access point three. So Bob is solid with access point two, Lois is solid with access point three, 
And then these access points will forward that traffic over to the router, in this case, access point one, so that Lois can get to the internet. And the cool thing is, it's super solid as far as connectivity wise with Wi Fi, and it's transparent to the users. They don't know this is all just one Wi Fi network to them. And one of the great things about most of these Wi Fi solutions for small office, home offices, is that they are a breeze to set up and the intelligence for the communications and all the background activity happens transparent to the user. So that Bob and Lois and any other user that just wants to use the network gets solid as a rock connectivity and doesn't have to worry about it. Another way of looking at this, if we were comparing this to a traditional local area network, is if we had switches. With switch one, two, and three, and they all have interconnections between them. And then one of these devices is also connected to a router which is then connected to the internet. It's the same logic here, except super easy to set up with just a few clicks inside of an app and it's all set up and ready to go. And for those of you who have worked with some switches before and maybe wondering, well, if this is a switched environment, how do we prevent a loop? Meaning Lois sends traffic into access point three and that traffic goes to access point one and forwards to access point two and back to access point three and just loops and loops and loops, loops forever. That wouldn't be good. And the answer to that question is that in a mesh Wi-Fi network, they use STP, Spanning Tree Protocol. Now, the great news is that all those details are handled behind the scenes by Wi-Fi applications that support mesh, including from Google and Samsung and Ubiquiti's Amplify product. But the bottom line is that mesh Wi-Fi networks are absolutely awesome to give us that foundation that can support anywhere in the house with no dead spots. So thanks for joining me in this video. Click on subscribe so you can be aware of when the new ones come out regarding implementing Google Wi-Fi and Ubiquiti solutions and others. And I'll see you in those videos.